Jesus is Lord. Hello, brothers and sisters. Welcome back to the book of Colossians as we're rounding up, as Paul is giving the conclusion to the Colossians. And he continue in this typical Pauline way. As I said before, uh, many times in his conclusion, he will do some final exhortation that are not necessarily connected to his, the rest of his argumentation. But other things that he will do also is uh, reach out or uh, greet some of the people he know, either from his group to them or directly to them per se, people he knows over there. We see the same thing in Colossians. He then will touch on his final, final salutations, which we will see in the last video. But for now, we're going to break down this communication, these greetings to the different people and to different groups. And I would say that these Pauline conclusions are actually useful for us to better understand the primitive church. It's in them that we see, um, well, first of all, that most, not necessarily all, but most of these churches were home churches with anywhere between 50 to 150 people, uh, depending on the, uh, the size of the home. So it wasn't mega churches. And a great example of that is seen in Romans 16. He's writing to the Church of Rome, and yet when he starts to talk about the church and, and uh, uh, give his salutations to the people, it's many home churches and leaders of all these different home churches, but it's one church, the Church of Rome. Uh, another thing that we, uh, we see is that um, it wasn't really proper to have a one-man show. Uh, what I mean is the one church, one pastor for a church, or one missionary family who wanted to start a thing by themselves. Well, we see that Paul had a team, and many times he mentions a lot of different people, different teams working together, many elders in a church, or, or many uh, in his missionary group. And again, we'll see that in Colossians. And the final thing I would say is this importance on communications. Um, we take it for guarantee because I can pick up the phone. I can use the internet and connect with people around the world, right? believers from anywhere. But back then, um, where the means of communications for long term was letters, but you can't write everything on a letter, though it takes too long. But you can send messengers, and we see a lot of that, and we're going to see that again today. And so we're going to focus on these uh, messengers and then the first part, we're going to break it down of these salutations. Look at verse 7 to 9. And see and meet together these messengers sent by Paul. So we start with verse 7. It says, Tychicus will tell you all about my activities. He is a beloved brother and faithful minister and fellow servant in the Lord. We meet the Jacobs a couple other times in Paul's epistles. He's in Ephesians, in 2 Timothy, and in Titus. Now the fact he shows up in those last two epistles shows us that he was with Paul not only in his first, but also in second and last imprisonment, where his head was uh, eventually cut off. But he was with Paul even in prison. He, he's with them when, when he writes 2 Timothy, most probably written from that famous prison where he's going to die. And here now, as we see in Ephesians and Colossians, he's writing with Paul, he's with Paul in prison. So he, he was part of Paul's team, was very faithful in, in that. That's why Paul can call him a faithful minister, a fellow servant, or co-doulos. Uh, you know, co-slave, like Paul was. And again, we need to resist the temptation of trying to give him a specific title. All of them, he must have been an official minister, uh, a missionary or something. No, he, these, these titles, um, they, they came later on in church history. Right now, what they were called is faithful minister. Now, there's um, possibilities that when in 2 Corinthians, Paul talks about a certain brother, he doesn't give him a name, who is known for having been in Paul's team, but also known for having served in his own church back in Macedonia, that they could be the same guy. A lot of the, uh, the early theologians and, and writers have speculated that, that he could be that unnamed person. So he hints at that because Tychicus was from Macedonia. So showing that he, he, he would 
been part of his church and on certain occasions joined Paul's team. And yet, again, Paul would call him a faithful minister and also a fellow or, or, or um, co uh, slave with us. And I like that the reason he sends him, he says, is so you will know about my activities. Like I said, he's going to share this communication that can be put in the letter. He's going to continue down this line of I'm sent him for communication and hit the, the, the point home when he says in the next verse, um, I have sent him to you for this very purpose, that you may know how we are and that he may encourage your hearts. Don't miss that, right? That the very purpose, the very reason I sent Tychicus is to inform you about me and my group, the people who are with me. I'll get back to that in a second. But it's not the letter. I mean, it, Paul could have sent the letter through no mail, if I could put it like that, or through anybody. But he didn't want just to correct the theological errors, which is very important. He also wanted to connect with this church he didn't personally know, and they personally didn't know him. But it's more than that. Remember, uh, the founding pastor, Epaphras. Epaphras, who had started this church and two other churches, we'll meet later in the letter. Um, well, he went to visit Paul in prison. And that was a long and dangerous trip, by the way, back then. And they hadn't had any news from him for some time, probably. And we're wondering, most probably, um, but what's happened to our pastor? Is he okay? Is he alive? Is he coming back? Well, Tychicus is going to tell you about that. See, that's probably why Paul says something like, he will encourage your hearts. He's going to tell you, a prophet is okay. He's going to come back in a few months. You know, um, and don't worry, he's not angry with you that you let in these false teachers. All these things, they'll be able to know. And speculating, I know, but still, he's going to encourage your hearts through this information, this this communication of what's going on with Paul and his team so the Colossians can know that. that that's how they're going to be encouraged. I, I like that. It's not necessarily the theology and doctrine, even though I love uh, the good, the teaching, the, the doctrines and theology can do. Yet Paul here says it's communication of what's going on with us. So you can know. He, he used the, the exact same or a very similar word for uh, the Holy Spirit, the Comforter, the Paracletos. Encourage is actually in the same category of words. It's, uh, again, this idea of, of, of Paraclet, of, of um, communicating to the heart, encouraging. But he's not going to be alone in this. No, because Paul is sending one more person. And with him, Onesimus, our faithful and beloved brother, who is one of you. They will, they will tell you of everything that has taken place here. Now, discovering that Onesimus is with Tychicus, and he's one of them, brings us to speculate very seriously that um, this church in Colossae is probably the same church that's in the home of Philemon that we discover in the book of Philemon. Because Onesimus is Philemon's runaway slave. He comes from the same town as Philemon, the same house as him, and now Paul is saying Onesimus is one of you guys. So again, most probably, he is writing to the very church that's in Philemon's home, the church of Colossae, the Colossian church. And I love that, therefore, he mentions and he calls him a faithful and beloved brother. Almost like hitting, the, again, the point home. Guys, you know the story that he, he left, maybe even stolen from, from Philemon? But he's going back as a beloved and even a faithful brother. Welcome him. Embrace him. But that's what he writes to Philemon in his letter. right? To embrace him, to receive him as a brother now. Forgetting the debt and really inviting him in as a dear, beloved brother. Now, we missed the difference in title, though. Um, before, let's, let's take the time to go back. You see, you see, he calls him a beloved brother, like, like he did for our, our, our brother uh, Philemon. But at the same time, he, he said, 
faithful minister and faithful servant. So there seems to be a difference between these two men. So yeah, there is a place to say there's a difference between those who will be a bit more involved in ministry and those who are considered faithful and beloved brothers. It doesn't mean one is better than the other. I'm just saying it does show that there was a difference in any uh, 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 serving of getting involved. And again, not necessarily giving a specific title, just saying Tychicus seems to have a greater involvement, a greater connection to Paul's team than Onesimus did. But the most important part, I think, is that last part. Here's the third time now Paul says that this is what he said. So they can know everything that has taken place here. Three times in three verses. Each time, again and again, Paul hitting the point home. This is why I've sent these guys to give you this information, to connect with this church. You don't know me, but now you can. And as you will sense, they're going to take your information so now I can know you as well. At the same time, you might be wondering what's going on with your pastor. You're going to know about it. The connection is made through these men. It just shows us that, yes, it's good we come together to share the word and to pray and to, to do very spiritual things, but there's still a place of, of just sharing what's going on in our lives, of just talking, getting to know each other, that that can really be a great blessing and very biblical in and of itself because it was very important and even inspired by the Holy Spirit for Paul it was important. So, I think it's a very good reminder of uh, to us how, how there is a place for such uh, uh, communication and sharing and just talking, getting to know each other and just knowing what's going on in each other's lives. To build those strong bonds like Paul was trying to build with the Colossians and was to, probably trying to keep alive with the Colossians and their pastor, Epaphras. So, with that said, let us communicate among each other. Let us share, especially we live in a day and age where communication is so much more easy. I don't have to take a long trip of months to come and talk to you. We can pick up the phone. We can communicate through the internet. Let us communicate. Let us connect with one another. And in that way, have that greater connection uh, to the glory of our God. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, um, we pray as Christ prayed that we will be one as you are one. And in this day and age where we have such technology and possibilities to make those connections possible, we pray that we would use them, Lord. We wouldn't use this technology to waste our time, but instead connect with the brothers and the sisters, to call them, to reach out to them, to message them, to pray with them. Lord, help us to see the good and just knowing what's going on in each other's lives and staying in contact as Paul did, as Paul wanted. So lead us in these things, we pray, in Jesus' mighty name. As with that said, brothers and sisters, um, I hope you were blessed by this. Let me know. And if you disagreed, I'm willing to hear it. But he's gonna burn it away. I'm holding furnace ablaze. Eternal the day, somebody come on.